Good evening, I'm Yvonne Stapp, and I welcome you to Science for the Public's Contemporary Science Issues and Innovations Program. Tonight, we learn how geometry determines what is possible in structure and in motion. Our guests are Professors Ilyana Strenu and Chipran Porcia, both on fellowships this year at Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Research. Their project at Radcliffe Institute is a book that explains the geometry behind everything from human and robotic motion to protein folding, expansion of crystals, and numerous other things. Dr. Stenu is the Charles Clark Professor of Computer Science and Mathematics at Smith College in Massachusetts. She is also a fellow of the American Mathematical Society and has received many awards. Dr. Chipran Borchia is Professor of Mathematics and Applied Sciences at Ryder University in New Jersey, and his award-winning work in algebraic geometry has contributed significantly to the understanding of structure and motion in animate and inanimate forms. Dr. Stenu and Dr. Borchia are contributing to greater understanding of the complexities of motion and form, which will lead to deeper understanding of nature and to applications in a number of fields, including robotics. It's an honor to welcome Dr. Strenu and Dr. Borchia. Welcome. Could you give us a little background about, since you deal with both structure and motion, what does geometry provide? Geometry provides the description of the object that is moving. Okay. It provides the constraints ah. because it cannot move arbitrarily. And uh, it provides the mathematical tools to think about it. Okay. Then, so it would it be fair to say then that there's a geometry underlying all of this stuff? Absolutely. And it's a question of learning how that works, is that the... Learning, discovering it. Y yes, okay. Or uncovering what is already there. Right, right, and it seems like it's a very fascinating thing. What about like, say, motion? Uh, in terms of motion, how does that geometry um, influence what is possible in motion? The constraints are there. Yeah. Uh, geometry is, uh, is uh, telling us uh, what's possible, what's not, okay. and thus provides the uh, underpinnings for uh, other layers of, say, physics, chemistry, to nuance the um, uh, situation at hand and uh, uh, develop even more uh, refined uh, models. Okay. Uh, but uh, in a way, uh, mathematics is the, the level uh, where you can uh, ask with precision uh, questions, you can use um, a multitude of mathematical uh, tools to uh, attempt an answer, and uh, you you may also have inspiration for questions which have not been asked. That's right. You have a distinct, comprehensive approach. There seems to be a trend now toward multidisciplinary research and uh, development of things. Robotics would be a very good example, perhaps, but you have pursued this approach of being um, much more comprehensive. Could you give us a, just a rough idea of what that includes? Uh, first of all, um, none of us started as applied. N none of us started in robotics or in engineering yeah. or. So we were both interested in mathematical questions. And by the way, we also worked in, in quite disjoint areas of mathematics. It is the challenge that the problem, 
mm -hmm. uh, we were facing. We were looking at the problem. There were ideas that could be applied from my side, which is a computational geometry combinatorics, or from Cyprian side, which is more algebraic, topologic. And it was together that we could address these problems. Then we found that these problems actually came out in engineering, mm. in uh, computational biology, in uh, material science. So it is not that we started there, it's we learned that these problems have, are relevant in those fields. And then you start reading, and then you discover new questions, and then yeah. you talk to people. Yeah, right. And, and as always, there's a, a mixture of, uh, of chance and uh, purpose. That's yes. uh, I'm sure. And, uh, um, uh, chance has uh, uh, revealed to us uh, how uh, fruitful um, a mixture of uh, perspective can be. Perspective, that's um, the, yeah. And uh, then uh, uh, purpose has uh, um, uh, provided us with, um, with the, um, persistence to pursue a, a, a problem and also with um, 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 opening up to a multitude of similar problems, uh, not necessarily in the same area. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, um, so it, it may be addictive in the sense that uh, <laughs> uh, having uh, uh, some success with, with one problem encourages you to uh, look at, at uh, other problems. And um, uh, of course, uh, mathematics is implicated uh, uh, everywhere, yeah. but it's, it's a matter of, of flair, of, of um, orienting yourself to um, questions where uh, your, your mathematical tools can, uh, can make a, a contribution of, uh, of sufficient magnitude. Right. Could you give us some examples? I don't know whether you want to start with structures or with animated forms, but with uh, where these kinds of uh, principles are sort of really important, really helpful. Yes, probably um, biology would be the best consumer of this kind of mathematics. So it started with a colleague mentioning that the objects we were looking at um, look very much like protein backbones. Ah. And you start reading and then, yes, yeah, so this is a little bit of a piece of a backbone of a protein consists in the number of atoms. And the atoms cannot move arbitrarily. They are constrained by some bonds. Yes. So it started in this way. And then we started talking <laughs> with people. And um, the explanation, this is the kind of mathematics we want to apply to yeah. this problem. This is the kind of analysis we want to do. Uh, it leads to algorithm, algorithms and it leads to computations. And the answer was, sounds quite applicable, sounds interesting, give me the software. Oh, but the software is not <laughs> here yet because it's from mathematics yeah. to algorithms to software uh -huh, and then uh -huh. becoming it um, usable, becoming it a tool that biologists can use to right. infer their own conclusions from uh, from the analysis about the molecules that they are studying. Yes. And the molecules they are studying are for studying various diseases, for understanding phenomena that happens in our cells. So it's just a fascinating world, and yeah. it's not our world, but it's probably the way the science in the 21st century yes. will be will be probably the science of, uh, of biology. And biology needs a more solid mathematical background, very much, that. <laughs> very much like physics in yeah, the 20th absolutely. century right. was led to the discovery of so much and, and the development of so, right, so, so right. much mathematics. Well, it, it, they say it really in biology, 
you have to have, there are three things. You need the mathematics and the base, you need physics, and you yes. need chemistry. So you started out by just talking with other people and discovered that you had many contributions <laughs> to we, make. Uh, yeah. In waiting, yes, contributions in, in waiting. But, uh, um, to illustrate uh, perhaps the um, um, advantage of, of geometry, um, it's it's these days very easy to refer to you know, the, the double helix yes, structure of absolutely. the DNA, and um, that that shows how you know, geometry goes many times to the heart of of the problem Abs yes. and and offers a very um, refined language. Um, and simplifying language for um, for putting together a, a multitude of indirect information, and and then you have uh, in uh, in a, a direct and and intuitive uh, manner um, an essential part of. Uh, of what you were uh, looking for. Right. I think that double helix is a wonderful example. It's a familiar one, for one thing, yes. for, for people. But they had to work to find out what that structure was. That was a most important thing. We were talking a little bit before about things like just motion. We take this for granted. But in fact, there are underlying restrictions on how animate things might move, and you get to the mathematics. Can you tell us anything about that? that. So let's use the molecules again. Okay. So um, the, um, the proteins are, are like the building blocks of life, mm -hmm. and some of them are real motors, like little mechanical, amazing, uh, little yeah. mechanical uh, creatures, if you want, that uh, perform functions in our bodies. And those functions depend both on the structure, on the shape, they also depend on the motion. So there are some molecules, for instance, in the, in the cell that, uh, that move mm -hmm. to allow certain processes to happen. And if you inhibit that motion, you may stop that process. So it may be the case that you want to stop the action. For instance, if there is a disease where mm -hmm. the action mm -hmm. exactly is facilitated by a certain protein moving, mm. you may want to place the drug in such a way that that motion is inhibited. So now the challenge here is we know that they move, but we are not looking. You, you see this, this is mm -hmm. a model. Mm -hmm. We see it, but what you, what you actually, the, the physical experiment produced data that is then interpreted to look like this. And uh, um, to the best of our knowledge, nobody has seen mm. these uh, molecules at work. We are building models. We are uh, speculating that motion may happen in a certain way, mm -hmm. and all these speculations and assumptions and hypotheses are the result of how these uh, hypotheses um, match the experimental data. And so the, our goal is to produce models that are closer to uh -huh. what, to match the data as close as possible. Yeah. So that is where both structure and motion come into right. picture. Right. We are attracted to the possibility that in, in some of the um, flexibility um, problems we uh, investigate, there, there might be an unseen additional structure which uh, explains much of the yes, yes. Of, of what uh, is um, um, uh, happening and. Uh, um, um, it may be there, it's, it may be uh, just a, a, a dream, but if, if you do uh, recognize the presence of additional uh, geometrical uh, underpinnings, then uh, uh, much of the analysis is uh, dramatically simplified. And uh, we have uh, um, uh, made uh, uh, progress in um, um, 
problems of robotics and uh, material science and uh, protein uh, uh, flexibility uh, precisely by uh, identifying such um, elements of structure which have not been uh, detected ah. or imagined before. Yeah, that is interesting. But there might be a set of restrictions, geometric restrictions, that feed a great number of actual applications. Is that the idea? Yeah, so for us the distinction is not between animate and inanimate, right. it's because you build an abstract model in the end. So yeah. let me illustrate some of that structure. Okay. Yeah, so this yeah. is a toy. That's fun. And it's <laughs> very well known, so Haberman sphere. And here's a characteristic that it has. If I pull on it, yes. it expands. Yes. Yes. But I do not need to, to move any other part. All the other parts are, the, the emotion is determined by just me moving the fingers right. away from right. each other. Right. So what is it? The constraints in this motion are so that this, uh, th the whole motion is determined. It's called one degree of freedom. It's a single trajectory that it can have. I'm and sorry, what was the term again? Trajectory. No, the t uh, something freedom? Uh, de one degree, degree of, of freedom. freedom. One degree of one freedom. One degree of okay. freedom, yes. So mathematically it the means that it is just a trajectory that it can follow. Okay. It, it, there are not many motion, many trajectories that are possible. So here are other toys. Okay. And these toys are built from straws. This would <laughs> with get pins. people into geometry yes. all yeah. just by itself. All these fun and, uh, things. And again, uh -huh, when again, I move, isn't that yeah, yes. it's, it's determined. So yes. there are no uh, other possibilities but this one. In, and this one was taken apart. Uh, on purpose because I can move it, but uh -huh. if I place this yes, constraint yes, there, yes. It the motion changes is everything. It, it changes, yes. Right. And then this, so I need one hand to move this. Yes. Then I need one hand right. to move this. So right. there are more degrees of freedom. You can think of the degrees of freedom as the actuators or motors that right. you have to place right. in various parts so that the whole thing moves. So understanding what is the degree of freedom, right. understanding how many pieces you have to move to get a general motion, it's one of one such uh, structural element that we are trying to discover. That, yes, that is one yes. thing. Okay. The other structural thing is that when parts move, some of these parts are strictly are moving together. So yes. for instance, this piece here does not deform, does not change the shape. Right. So that's another structural element. And when you have structures with thousands and millions of atoms in them, yes. if you can discover if you discover that a few hundred thousand of them actually move together, this can lead to substantial simplifications of the Gen or of understanding the right. general uh, motion right. of the object. Right, which is exactly what you're after. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's, again, there's just some really uh, deeply underlying things. It fascinates me that it's always mathematics. Can you tell us something about like physical motion that would have constraints that are mathematical? To a, to a large extent, uh, uh, physics, uh, um, involves mathematics oh, yeah, uh, yeah. At, uh, at every step, uh, but uh, also with um, diversity of, uh, of uh, models and uh, hypotheses. And um, as, as mathematicians, we use um, our flair, which may be distinct or resembling, uh, but um, but the, the various uh, sciences complement each other mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the problems we have uh, studied, one may say occasionally that less is more, because if you reduce the complexity of, of a situation, at least in imagination, uh, you can see more easily perhaps what are the key factors, and uh, and then you can uh, 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 go back and uh, and talk to physicists and uh, and chemists and, uh, and say, right, well, right, right. Uh, 
geometry shows this realm of possibilities. Now, of course, physics and, and chemistry uh, will have uh, other um, restrictions or, um, or favored path, but uh, less is more can be um, uh, can be fruitful. <laughs> yeah, finding at the same time how fruitful this combination of your talents is. Have you worked together for a long time along these lines, or about? Yes, uh, by now. By now, now it may be you're called veterans. a long time. Okay, yes. so yes. at you, least fifteen years. Yes, so you're very years. seasoned with with yes. this. Although it's newer to us, the, the revelations coming out of that. Could you tell me what have been your favorites, like your, your, your things that have been most exciting? There are a few examples. The best examples are problems that can be stated very easily. Yeah, but that's work, getting yes. to that. Uh, so you learn about the problem. It's so simple to state. It starts up becoming an obsession, there should be an answer. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you start seeing the structure, you start um, addressing it in layers. Okay. And the geometry is one layer and other yeah. layers can be added yeah, later. Okay. But you first want to discover that simplicity at the bottom. So what okay. Ciprian said, less is more. Yes. So for instance, if we talk about a protein yes. that is produced in the ribosome in the yeah. inside the cell in a sequential fashion and then it starts folding. That's right. But you are interested in if things get too close to each other, right. they may collide, right? So right. we want to know how what is the maximum distance to which two atoms, for instance, yes. can get given the constraints of the backbone of the protein. Right. It's a problem that has been in robotics, has been stated at least 40, 50 oh, years oh, ago. Oh, oh. There were experiments that were experimental information um, or rather empirical yeah. um, validation of certain mm -hmm. assumptions. But um, um, together, working together, we were able to get a very, very simple mathematical description, as understanding a structure underlying this very elementary problem. Then this problem has applications in other uh, yes. areas. Beyond what you originally exactly. looked for, so I guess. Yes. And there uh, are other moments uh, significant in, uh, in the research. And for instance, when uh, 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 when the partner comes with the, uh, uh, the correct solution that you were searching with, with your methods. And, uh, and this was um, very uh, bonding for us. Of course. Uh, and the demonstration that um, you know, your specialty uh, has, uh, you know, a, history of development and very powerful tools, Yes, it doesn't mean that um, you know, success is guaranteed. I, uh, and, uh, okay. uh, uh, but um, approaching from uh, uh, several angles uh, is, uh, um, can be very stimulating and uh, you learn from the other side. Uh, you evolve with what what you know more and have more nimbleness with. Right. But and but in the end, if you succeed to come with the with the final answer, it's it's not what you imagined. I bet <laughs> that's initially. probably true, which is uh, a fun thing all by itself. A, a very excite must uh, be really exciting, a revelation. And that there's also this this joy of understanding. That's that, just that it. Things come right. together. Yeah. And uh, uh, and you recognize that uh, now maybe a small piece of insight, which happened uh, two weeks ago, uh, was the the, the seed for. Um, for a breakthrough. Yes. And that's uh, and also. That has led to breakthroughs. Can you uh, tell us about anything that you had thought was particularly rewarding in that, re an example that 
where you made one of these discoveries and that it opened up something for you. Can you give us an example of that? Let's use a word that will sound scary. Okay, yes. scary word. So, <laughs> oxetic. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it comes from the Greek word to grow. Yeah. It's, it's an object like, where, like, like this one, yeah. it has the ability to move. Right. But when it moves, it grows in yeah. all possible directions in this case. Right. So if you think about normal materials, if you pull on something, yes. it tends to get thinner in the yes. other direction. So we learned that material scientists were intrigued by this kind of problem, yes. that some examples exist in nature where materials have this counterintuitive yeah. property where that you pull yeah. and it grows. Yes, It grows up to a point. So we were intrigued because it was related to the structures that we were previously looking at. Yes. And said, this sounds like our expensive mechanisms. Yes. Maybe there is a relationship. So it took a couple of years of discussions and uh, uh, small steps and in the end coming up with the right definition, with the right concept, with the, um, the right simplification, if you want. So yes. the right model so that you can start asking questions that were not even asked before. Ah. And then you discover that all of a sudden everything falls together. Right. Very much like after you discover that DNA has a helical structure, yes. then you have an explanation it, yes. for many other phenomena that's, that's that before true. there that was no mechanism. Exactly. People yeah. knew that it should happen right. somehow, but now you propose a mechanism and that mechanism all of a sudden seems to explain many other right. phenomena. This oxetic behavior is, uh, yeah. is uh, of interest because it, um, um, with the more recent uh, possibilities of um, of design of very at very small scales and three uh, D printing, right. um, the uh, ability to uh, manufacture um, uh, structures which are not necessarily found in nature, uh, but uh, that very structure is is leading to uh, desired uh, uh, functionality. I see. And this is of, of interest. And um, there are uh, so many um, approaches here. Of course, one is not uh, initially guaranteed uh, success. Right. And for us, uh, a great satisfaction was that um, we um, approached it strictly geometrically. Uh, we had a, a feeling that uh, the modeling will uh, uh, will be will help see uh, more into what makes such structures uh, oxetic and. Uh, one, one moment of great satisfaction was to see how the geometric uh, uh, language is, is uh, indeed uh, apt to express what, uh, what is there, of course. Like uh, a universal principle. Yes, right. yes. yes. So uh, at this level of idealized um, uh, behavior, uh, the answer is complete and, and is, is involving very, uh, very basic uh, shapes. It's and it's opening up so much. You mentioned the material science, for example, is a huge field and yes. they need that very much. So it really informs it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left and I need to ask you about your book project. Could you give us an idea what it's about? It is about explaining all the abstract mathematics and all the concepts, distilling them to the simplest way in which we can convey the ideas to the, to the educated scientist, but not necessarily a mathematician trained okay. in the same way that we 
uh, right. we, it, it's not about the path in which we discover them. It's about how you can best explain it to other fields, to people, to biologists, to right. material right. scientists, to physicists, yes. not necessarily trained in this kind of geometry. Yes. Uh, I just want to insert there, I, I don't know if, if it's common knowledge, but when Einstein worked on, I think it was on when, uh, general relativity, he needed a particular kind of math. That he didn't know. And so coming up, I think I'm thinking of matrix math, but I may be yes, wrong, yes. but he needed something different to explain it. So you could be brilliant in one field, and so this is the problem today. There. Or some Sometimes that math may not even exist. Ah, there. So that's somebody's got to go off and exactly. invent it, or invent it, or see whether the way it was formulated, whether the way the form the formulation of the problem yeah. makes sense. Yes, yes. And so that is what uh, what chal well, we found as a challenge in addressing all these questions. Right. So in writing your book, you're writing this these principles or whatever, yes. uh, maybe not necessarily the equations or something, but the principles for people that are in sciences that will find these things useful. That's just what they're looking for. Yes, and, and fortunately, uh, um, geometry can be uh, oftentimes communicated through uh, images and... Uh, uh, this is a, a, a very a persuasive way of uh, uh, sometimes uh, um, illustrating a, a whole uh, chain of ideas yes. uh, in, uh, in um, a figure or in an um, animation. And um, uh, of course, many strands contribute, and some are uh, analysis, some are yeah. combinatoric, some are group theory, and uh, uh, but um, uh, trying to uh, condense the, you know, the technical uh, details and just reach some some level of uh, um, essential. Uh, insight yeah. is part of, of our intention, to, right. uh, which uh, hopefully will uh, uh, facilitate and promote the, right. the dialogue with uh, other scientists yeah. which uh, may may not uh, have the all the um, uh, technical uh, familiarity right. with with certain pieces, but. Are, are definitely uh, interested in the uh, larger um, uh, scenario. Exactly. That, um, so this is a very timely project that is that is will change um, some areas of the way you think about these different problems. We so? we, we believe so. Ah. we believe <laughs> so, and uh, you you have to look back and see that uh, most major discoveries are done by people who are not necessarily just in Narrow, one. Right, right. So if it is a general principle, yeah. it has to be more wider um, recognizable. Right. I think it sounds wonderful. I hope that your book is a big success. I'm sure that it will be. It sounds like it's very a timely kind of project, and I envy you your ability to get at the very base of a great number of problems. Thank you very much for joining us and for giving us this wonderful information. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you.